Hey Diddy Story Manifesto, I'm so glad you're here. I'm Leah Falls, writer and actor, and today we've got another segment of saving tropes. We'll be looking at a trope that is commonly disliked and see what we can do to save it and look a little bit of the background of the trope. Be sure to watch till the end of this video because I'll be announcing the winner of my very first giveaway and I'm excited for that, so be sure, be sure to stay with me. But first, let's dish about tropes. What's the trope? The trope we're talking about today is insta-love. Similar to our last segment with love triangles, I'm sure you've heard the term insta-love before. It's also known as love at first sight and it's generally the idea that one look is enough to fall in love. The insta-love trope widens this definition a little bit. It's not necessarily one look, it could be one conversation, one moment or even one or two days, but it's a short enough time that it stands out as unusual. What qualifies as insta-love is very much up for debate and taste. But but for the sake of this discussion, let's define it as any romance in which falling in love happens hard, quick and without much uncertainty and questioning. As a heads up, I'll be talking about romantic love and romantic attraction in this video, but of course that's not the only kind of love. A romantic people, I see you. And if you're not familiar with the term aromantic or the aero spectrum, I'll be leaving an article about it. I'd love if you read it just to, you know, educate yourself a little bit more. That sounded like a dish. It's not a dish. This, this. Sick burn. It's always good to educate ourselves. So that aside, we'll be talking about romantic love and romantic attraction and a little bit of sexual attraction as well. Where did it come from? The idea of insta-love has been in our collective canon for as long as storytelling exists. It's another one of those love at first sight that, that is just part of the way we tell stories. And for just as long it has been debated and argued about whether the idea of falling in love immediately is true or whether it's something people experience or whether not. Because, you know, love is very much debated. I'm sure you've formed your own opinions on insta-love and whether love at first sight exists or not. It's also very much tied to our identities and character traits. Like, if you're very idealistic, you're supposed to believe in it. And if you feel like you're more of a cynical person or more of a skeptic, you're supposed to feel skeptical to it. So it, it somehow gets very tight to us. I used to define myself as a hopeless romantic. Um, I have a bit more of a nuanced take on that now, and I'm not sure if I still like the hopeless in there, but... Um, <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is that it's a very divisive question whether or not it exists. And that's kind of important to keep in mind when we're looking at the trope because art mirrors nature and the other way around. Mythology is ripe with insta-love or at least insta-adoration. And on Wikipedia, when you look at the entrances of insta-love and love at first sight uh, stories, even the Bible is cited with Jonathan and David and Samuel 1. Um, if you're interested in that, I did read that excerpt and um, I thought it was quite interesting for debate. They definitely have a very special relationship. And one more quick disclaimer as I'm going a little bit through the history that I found and uh, different occurrences in our history. I'll be talking from a very Western, white-centric perspective and I'm sorry about that. If you have stories and insights from other cultures and ethnicities, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Just want to say that what I'm presenting as history is very much a European-centric history. But of course, it's important that we keep widening our horizon. All right, let's continue. In fiction, the earliest occurrence I found is the novel, 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 is the novel The Elegy of Lady Fiametta, written in 1343 by the Italian writer Giovanni Boccaccio. Funnily enough, the story agrees with the people that complain about insta-love and complain about the trope nowadays because Lady Fiametta falls in love with her lover on first sight, uh, but he abandons her and she finds out that he actually had another woman in another city. So it shows that that instant attraction did not work out. Which is really interesting to me because even as we look at the more famous stories that use it, the argument is already there between the romantic idealism and the argument that it cannot be real and it's just an illusion. It's very much argued. The next popular occurrence in Europe is the 16th century ballad The King and the Beggar Mate. 
Uh, it is said to have inspired Shakespeare and a lot of other famous writers, and Shakespeare himself uses the insta love trope again in Romeo and Juliet. So that ballad had a lot of uh, influence, a lot of writers to come afterwards. In the ballad, an African king experiences no attraction to any woman. <clears throat> A queer person until he sees a beggar maid and falls immediately in love with her proposes to her on the spot and she becomes his queen and this is a story we know from fairy tales it's the cinderella at the ball struck by lightning kind of romance and that story oftentimes shows up in very early works of a specific medium it occurs in mozart's the magic flute and we see it in sorry i was really worried that i said the wrong word that's flute flute yes and we also see it in pre-code hollywood movies for example the bowery but we see the trope and insta love going wrong just as frequently in victor hugo's novel uh, the hunchback of notre dame for example the novel not the movie the movie is probably good but i refuse to watch it because they made phoebus the a good guy and he is like the major villain in the book in my opinion and they have strong opinions about the book but anyway uh, in it love at first sight and insta love is what pretty much destroys every character so while it's easy to dismiss insta love as a cheap romance trope it is a subject that writers have explored throughout history and will probably continue to argue whether or not it exists and it's possible before we go into the appeal of the trope let's briefly define what love we're really talking about here a lot of people that are critical of the trope are reducing it to lust, but I do feel like just looking at sexual attraction doesn't fully do it justice. I don't believe we can scientifically measure love. I'm way too in love with the bohemian artistic ideals for that. Love is a many splendid thing. But it might be helpful to look at the three different ways our body can react to insta-love and to different kinds of attraction. The data that I'll be loosely talking about is from a Harvard article. Uh, I'll be linking it in the description, so feel free to read up on it as well. I am not a biologist, I am not a scientist, I'm talking about it in broad strokes. Basically, love is defined in three categories, lust, attraction and attachment. The sex hormones take care of lust and while that is certainly a fun part of the journey, I don't think it is necessary for insta-love to work. Attraction shows itself as a dopamine rush and lowered serotonin levels and uh, if you have too much of that rush, the attraction can tilt over into obsession. This can this pendulum can uh, make the difference between a successful insta love and a creepy one if a creepy one is intended like it sort of is in the hunchback of notre dame then it's great to play with the idea of how that dopamine rush overshadows our reason and regular thinking and by regular i mean rational i'm not implying we're all rational all the time I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that most of us have probably experienced the unhealthy form of attraction uh, with the more obsessive tendencies. It tends to show up in teenage years and that can be really interesting to explore in a story uh, but if it's unintended or unaddressed and just romanticized it can spoil the love story. The third love component is attachment and it's based on familiarity, comfort and emotional and mental closeness. It releases oxytocin, also named the cuddle hormone, which makes us feel safe and at home. And also good. Cuddle hormone! Insta-love is often dismissed as pure lust or over-enthusiastic attraction, but I believe the third component here, attachment, is the key ingredient to making a successful insta-love story. So the key would be to find the familiarity, find that comfort in something completely new. And we're not at the saving it part yet, but I just want to look at the chemical components because I do think it informs when it works and when it really doesn't work. Let's look at Rapunzel and Flynn from Tanglet for a moment. And spoiler alert, if you want to skip it, uh, I'll put the spoiler link in the description. Spoiler link. I'll put a link to all the spoilers in the description just to ruin your day. In Tangled, Flynn gives up his life for her freedom, even though they've only known each other for two days. So that's pretty much a classic insta love story. The reason why it doesn't feel rushed, at least to me, is that despite the initial attraction, there's the attachment component. In those two days, they have near-death experience, they share really vulnerable moments, and they share how they actually connect and their perspectives 
on life and that releases the cattle hormone or in other terms all of that fosters attachment and hence it's much more believable that they'd stay together instead of just being a spur of the moment type of thing that doesn't mean characters need to go on big emotional journeys within a day for the trope to work although it definitely helps maybe there are two immigrants in a different country maybe they have the same favorite book maybe they are dressed as the same character at comic-con that's why meet cutes i think get Get so much more leeway and so much more forgiveness than insta love because it focuses more on that attachment part. Okay, that was a pretty long explanation on where insta love comes from, both in our fictional canon and biologically speaking. But now let's take a look at what the appeal is because it does show up a lot. So what's the appeal? Despite the many valid reasons uh, for why the trope is often problematic, mainstream audiences do enjoy it. And yes, Mainstream includes you and me, no matter how fancy we are. Winking's hard. Here are five reasons that make the trope appealing. And just to be clear, we're talking about well-written insta-love. We'll be addressing the issues in the next point. Reason number one, it's an antidote to cynicism. In our daily lives, it's somewhat difficult, in my experience at least, to remember that our life could change drastically at any moment. And when we do remember it, it's often more of an anxiety-fueled worst-case scenario, like everything could crash any moment. Truth is, our lives could drastically improve at any moment. And as long as that doesn't lead to an action on your part, it's a really healthy belief to adapt. It's really healthy to believe that great things can always be happening. Something great could just be around the corner. It's a really healthy mindset to adapt. And Insta Love tells us stories of exactly that happening. The character had no idea that they'd be meeting someone who would mean the world to them. But then they do and life becomes much more beautiful. And it did change in the spur of a moment. And it also battles the whole voice of, oh no, I'm going to die alone. Because loneliness now doesn't mean loneliness later. And the Insta Love trope reminds us of that. No, logically speaking, we notice many more positive opportunities when we have a mindset of anything good can happen when we believe they even exist because when we don't believe they exist our brain might automatically filter them out and I do believe that we could all use a dose of anti-cynicism sometimes and I think the insta love trip helps with that when it's well written reason number two it reminds us of first loves and first crushes Insta love often focuses on this really intense rush of dopamine. They weren't expecting to meet someone and blam, there they are. And this definitely evokes nostalgia in us. It reminds us of when we first discovered what love actually is, when those first crashes showed us what the emotion is and where it leads to. And those kind of experiences are very appealing to read. There's a reason why the YA market is so big, way beyond its target audience. It's because people want to read stories that take them back to those moments when they were just figuring out how adulthood works and when they were having first-time experiences so often and discoveries so often and insta love kind of takes us back to that as well it's nice to read about characters that first learn what it means to be an adult and also if they figured it out we need we all need some inspiration right who, who even knows what it means to be an adult i love that sirens are going on while i say this and reading about adults, the mythological creature, falling in love in this more juvenile way also reminds us that we can rekindle those feelings and we discover things all the time. Reason number three, escaping from the stress of dating. Insta-love couples usually fall in love and work out right away. And that's not necessarily a good thing, but it does offer a good escapism from awkward dates and general fluctuating love life. Sometimes we read because we want to understand the depths of humanity. And sometimes we read because we want something simple and comforting. Art is about evoking emotions. And yes, peace and comfort definitely fall under the category. I say, as a dark fantasy writer, Goddess of Limbo will bring you so much peace and comfort when it comes out in summer. It's valid to want to read about two characters falling in love on the spot and finding happiness in each other. And I'm not raising my nose at that because, hey, romance readers, all readers, we all deserve a little bit more peace and comfort. And reason number four, it rekindles the initial attraction. The trope has a similar appeal to folks in a relationship. If you've been together for a while, it is really good to get a reminder of that initial spark that first kindled your relationship. 
It might not have been insta-love, but the rush of excitement and uncertainty could be similar. Reading about unquestionable romance can connect us to our own romantic feelings and hence help rekindle that spark a bit. And now to my personal favorite reason. Ha <laughs> ha, laughs in dark fantasy writer. Number five, hope in tragedy. We're leaving the romance genre for a moment here. Uh, Insta love is very often found in dark, dramatic, usually action heavy, how are they called? Books? Books. <laughs> Where there's not a lot of space for romantic conflict. In those cases, Insta love brings a little bit of levity and hope into the story. So a bit of a romantic ideal in, in other ways, very grim tale. Of course it's possible to include romance in these stories without using insta-love. They could have been best friends growing up, so friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, a slow burn in the background, that's all possible. But the insta-love trope becomes appealing because it doesn't distract much from the story and if written well it raises the stakes and makes us more attached to two characters now because we want both of them to survive if we're speaking about a couple. Similar to comedic relief it can make the whole reading experience a little bit more enjoyable. A devastating setting is also a realistic setting for an insta-love. Uh, we've seen that in wars and catastrophes, that shared trauma can actually build a really good foundation of an instant connection point for romance to kindle. Those are five of the reasons of why insta-love will probably continue to show up in book after book despite everyone supposedly hating it. But now let's look at the problem points and how to avoid them. What's the controversy and how can we save the trope? The most common argument I hear is that it's bad writing, but what makes it bad? Here are four problem zones I'm going to address today. Problem number one, it will never last. The insta love should be the initial spark, but it shouldn't be the full base of the relationship. We talked about Flynn and Rapunzel from Tangled earlier. Yes, it's their shared experience that initially brought them together, but it's the vulnerability that's in the way they exposed themselves to each other that really sealed the deal here. Those details can become the foundation of an actual relationship as they slowly get to know each other for real. For real! Insta love becomes a problem when it's built on shallow grounds. We have the attraction and perhaps the lust, but there's no attachment there. Those love stories are often based on physical looks or a one note idea or picture that they have of the other person. And everyone who's ever simped over that sexy villain, yes I am talking to you, can relate to that. Those feelings can be intense and perhaps transfer to the reader, but the future doesn't look very rosy and hence it's harder to get invested long term into them. It's great to start a couple with chemistry and excitement, but show us how they actually do complement each other long term as well. That differs it from infatuation. The movie Moulin Rouge is another example of insta-love. The initial insta-falling love is based on the misunderstanding and very much physical looks and attraction. But we already know that they share a similar outlook on life. Christian is an idealistic dreamer and before they officially get together we see Satine in the song uh, One Day I'll Fly Away dream about a more authentic way of living and freedom that she longs for. And hence we see that they would actually match very well beyond the infatuation and the oh my god she's so beautiful. It's really frustrating when we see two characters fall in love and the only thing they have in common is that love is how in love they are. Show us how they fit, give us something to root for individually and as a couple. I mean people constantly ship fictional characters that have never met uh, together because they know that they would make such a great couple. They can picture the dynamic and the chemistry. You don't have to have them meet and then start. We can see that already before they've met each other. When the insta love takes flight it needs to be more about celebrating how in love they are because otherwise we get... We would like uh, your blessing <laughs> of, of, of our marriage. Marriage? <laughs> marriage. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Problem number two, lack of emotional investment. Insta love can rob the reader of watching them fall in love, of rooting for, for the possible romance, the uncertainty of it, that whole spiel. And I don't think an insta love needs to take all of that away, but it definitely, certainly, often, positively often does. <laughs> Watching a connection build over time, seeing how feelings are forming in a character, all of that is really exciting, but that doesn't necessarily have to be missing if they get together right away. 
So we just have to stop looking at the getting together as the romantic climax. No pun intended here. <laughs> There's more to the relationship than that first conquest. In a good story, characters will have their own internal struggles to overcome. And yes, those can prevent a relationship from happening in the first place, but they can also show up a week, two weeks, a month after the relationship started. So it could be an insta-love, but then maybe their fear of commitment comes up or maybe they just don't know how to be with another person. Readers can't get invested if the stakes are too low or undefined. So why do we want them to be in a relationship? What are they getting out of that? What could happen if it goes wrong? And individually, is it something they always wanted? Is it something they've always been scared of? Is being in a relationship something they could never really picture for themselves? That's what really brings in the emotional investment for the readers. And it doesn't matter if the spark is quick because the relationship development will be juicy. The trick for me is to feel this way about both characters, being invested emotionally somewhat in both characters because if we just have all of this knowledge and connection to the protagonist but know nothing about the insta, the insta love uh, love interest it feels somewhat random so of course we don't need to know a bunch about the love interest but as the relationship develops we should get a clearer picture of what that relationship means to them in the first place and how it fits into their life. So in short, get your readers invested in the couple's future, not just the magic moment of the first spark. Problem number three, premature love declaration. It feels strange and sometimes creepy if a character declares their love for each other after just a couple of encounters or worse on the first encounter. The problem is that it either wouldn't happen that way or the partner would be creeped out, or if they're not creeped out, there's a misunderstanding of what love actually is at play here. Let's unpack the first one. It wouldn't happen like that. This is where a well-executed uh, escapism story can slide very quickly into cheap wish fulfillment. You want someone to ridiculously fall in love with you and declare it right on the spot. But would you really, would you be able to trust that declaration if it comes immediately or would you be suspicious of it? It's different when that declaration happens in internal thought. That can be really exciting when the character is confronted with this intense emotion for someone, an intense attraction and maybe even an intuitive feeling of that they're meant to spend more time together. And intuition can make it quite romantic and nice when it's happening internally. Not necessarily when it's happening externally. If they say it out loud, they're breaking a major social norm. And while that can be interesting, it does need to be addressed. It can't just be treated as normal when they say I love you on the first date. Which brings us to creeped out. It's different when uh, the love interest has already been pining for the character for a while, but if they're just getting to know each other, oof, I think they might be a little taken aback. So how would they really react to that declaration? If this is a fairy tale, it's completely fine. But if you want to add more realism in it, mm, it's a problem point. Now I'm actually going to agree with the cynics for a moment, don't get used to it. A love declaration from after the first spark that's based on little else is I think more make-believe than actual love. Because this poses the important question of is the character in love with the person or are they in love with the idea of the person? Are they in love with the idea of being in a relationship with them or being in a relationship in general? And once again, very interesting to explore in storytelling, but that's not that's not a healthy start. They're immediately attached to the idea of someone. That idea will crumble when reality sits in. And that's a good story to explore, but it's not romantic. The story set in general can of course work really well. Frozen is actually a good example here with Anna and Kristoff, where it later turns into romance, but it's not romantic inherently. It's not romantic in the first place, not inherently. It's not romantic in the first place. <laughs> If you're just in love with the idea of a person, you do not see the person. Problem number four, insta-love becomes insta-normal. All right, so this problem that I wanna address last here is that insta-love should never be considered normal, not for the characters and not really for the readers either. And please don't make the readers feel like it should be normal now. By nature, the character is caught by surprise. They're supposed to be thrown by it. But when both characters accept it right away and transition from being single people to being in a couple without any hesitation or reflection or any 
processing, it becomes unrealistic. The characters need to get used to this major life change, and frankly, the reader does as well. This refers back to the emotional journey. We still need to go on an emotional journey with these characters, even if their connection is instant. We can't just skip a big part. And I mean, you could do a time skip, I guess, but that could feel a little cheated could work for the story, but it's iffy. Please, please, please let them get acclimatized. Let them figure out how to be with each other, how to live this shared life. Acclimatize, such a romantic word. <laughs> but really, let them figure things out. That's why we read story, to have other people figure things out for once. So we don't have to. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it and give me a little boost for that YouTube algorithm. And now it's giveaway time. Woo, drum rolls. Uh, first of all, thank you for everyone who entered. And if you didn't win this time, don't fret. There's a lot of giveaways coming and in the works and there'll be a massive pre-sale giveaway probably starting in May for the couple of months before Goddess of Limber is removed, removed, released, <laughs> before my book is released. So don't worry, just stay connected and you'll be seeing more giveaways. All right, you ready? The winner is Daily Sama. Congratulations. Uh, please reach out to me at hello at leahfalls.com and send me your address so I can send you the lovely memoir here. Wait, I this is going to be your copy. The Manifestation Journal hasn't arrived yet uh, because I ordered it late, but it'll be here probably by the time that the video is up. And this will be your copy now of Amateur. Um, it's got the new cover and I think it looks really cool. So I'm ho I hope you're excited. Please reach out to me and congratulations. And once again, thank you everyone for entering and don't worry, there'll be more giveaways in the future. Quick update on the channel, these types of videos, uh, these longer video essay styles will become a little less frequent or honestly they already have. I'm thinking about twice a month, it's just that writing these scripts is quite time intensive and as I'm getting closer and closer to my book launch, it's becoming a little bit too much for me. So we'll still have these, we'll still have these lovely big trope talks and discussions twice a month, um, but I'll be experimenting a little bit with other videos in between. You'll probably be seeing a book review-esque video next week where um, I'll be talking about what I just read and the writerly insights that I'm taking from it. Do look out for that and let me know what type of videos you enjoy watching uh, that might be a little bit more off the cuff just because it's a little quicker to produce. My newsletter and my new website will also be launching soon, so make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter or both uh, so that you can be informed right away. Um, it's going, I'm quite excited for it. It's, it's turning out quite nice. So I'll be launching that probably within a week of this video being out. Thank you again for watching and have a lovely week. Confetti, it's not here, but it's in our hearts. Oh my god, I forgot to mention instant love.